Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. And lots of other stuff as well. I should add that to the title, shouldn't I? Um, please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Now, and to do also, please subscribe as well. So, wherever you're listening to this, please subscribe. Maybe leave a comment. All of my recordings are available on my website, uh, jasonnewland.com. There's over 1500 recordings on there for lots of different things, not just these, you know, this podcast. There's lots of other stuff I also do recordings for chronic pain, uh, stop smoking, um, oh, my mouth, I just made a weird noise then, oh, um, what other things, oh yeah, I've got other podcasts that are really regular, that I regularly update, that I do recordings for, on a kind of a daily basis or throughout the week, the Let Me Bore You to Sleep one, where I just talk, uh, kind of absolute rubbish really for about an hour <laughs> you could say maybe I do that in this one as well but that's uh, that's arguable I suppose and the other one is the deep sleep whisper hypnosis recordings that podcast they're a lot they last about 20 minutes each and there's the weekly sleep hypnosis weekly and that's you know once a week and it's you know there's lots of other stuff as well so Lots to choose from. And it's all free as well. Uh, so, if you like the service and you'd like to support the free service, please go to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. And as per usual, Andre, I can't believe it. Whenever I make this recording, Andre pops out. It's highly annoying. But uh, hopefully, he'll behave himself. So I'm going to do it. This is going to be a technique. This is not going to be a long recording. This is going to be a technique. And it's going to be a bit of a weird one. Okay. So I guess you could call it an interruption. You could call it, yes, yeah, lots of different things you could call it. But I'm going to call it the CD scratching technique or just CD scratching will be in the title so you know if you want to come back to it. So hopefully I don't have to explain what a CD is. Um, I think anyone over the age of 20s is going to know, but some people would have been brought up with MP3s and maybe don't know. but. I'm guessing most people would at this stage know. But if you listen to this in 20, 30 years' time, you might have to um, go online and Google it or whatever search engine or process is used in the future. So, in the old days, which wasn't that long ago, CDs, I'm not going to describe what a CD is, by the way. CDs, if you bought a CD, and it got scratched. It kind of was a bit buggered. And I used to be a DJ back in you know, the late 90s. And I kind of did the job for drinks, really, to be fair. I just did it just for a social, just a, a friend let me do it. But the I used to buy CDs and leave them there on a Saturday night, come back on Friday night, and someone else had been using my CDs. So the bar staff, Wednesday, Thursday night, maybe people during the day, the cleaners, whatever, might be going in, getting the CDs, playing it on the main CD player near the bar, and then just chucking it, chucking it on a pile of other CDs when they put another one on. So not treating my CDs very, very nicely. 
I saved my CDs, but I was quite, you know, I didn't own them. But, you know, they were important because I needed them for those two hours per night at the weekend. So when they were scratched, it's very frustrating because it just doesn't work. A scratch song, a scratch CD does not work. It's absolutely, might as well just chuck it out. Say with a DVD, a scratch DVD. It's even worse than a scratch CD, to be fair. If you've got a box set, like the old days, I used to get box sets from Blockbusters. Again, if you're watching this in the future, you might need to Google that, DVD and Blockbusters. Two very popular things in the past. And, you know, I'd get through... I used to watch things like Prison Break or The Sopranos or Lost or whatever. And then I'd get through and then, you know, the fourth DVD of the box set would be scratched. Ah, it'd be so frustrating. There's nothing I could do apart from take it back. And then they'd refund me. They, the blockbusters were brilliant like that. They would refund me or give me another copy or whatever. They were cool. But it ruined it. For me, it ruined the experience because I was really in the flow, especially with Lost. I loved that show. Anyway, what this is, is the scratching CD or DVD, or you could, if you go back to vinyl, although vinyl was constantly... Vinyl is one of those things that just keeps going. Vinyl will always be around because it's loved. CDs aren't loved. DVDs aren't loved. I don't think MP3s are loved. There's something lovable about a vinyl record for some reason. So they will always be around, even if they're not produced. The the old ones will always be for some reason so you can use whatever you want to use you can use an album a play you know record player cd or dvd for this technique in your mind so you're not actually ruining anything so i want you to think about something get in touch with something that has happened lately that's really, really, it's just really got to you. And it's affected you more than just being angry, but it's affected you in a sense of uh, wanting to avoid doing something. As an example, maybe someone at work said something that, you reacted to whether internally or externally but now after the event you kind of just don't want to go to work which is a big problem to be fair you know something like that could cause the anxiety levels could just be horrendous for a situation like that and I have had similar situations like that who have not wanted to go to work because of someone. In fact, it's happened many, many. In fact, I actually haven't gone to work. I've left jobs over stuff like that in the past. But, you know, that's why I've had about 50 full time jobs since I left school. But that's just me. So, this is a way to maybe avoid the drasticness of leaving a job or phoning in it all or being ill so if you think about something it's not really about the thing it's about the emotion but the emotion is connected to the thing the image the memory the thought that's what the emotion is connected to I mean you could say you could cut the umbilical cord cut the string of the balloon, the balloon blows off and you know, you could do it that way 
So, but this is this is another way of doing it. It's kind of you know, it's there's lots of different ways to get to the same end. But there's that connection. When you sever or sever sever the connection, cut the connection, disconnect the connection. There's no emotion connected to that thing, to that thought, to that memory. It's not connected anymore to anything. It's just a picture or just a little movie or just a little memory that can't it can't give you those feelings that you had before because a memory does not have power over you a thought does not have power over you I know it feels like it can do sometimes but ultimately it can't if you decide that it can't In the same way as if you've got a, you got a five-year-old child telling you what to do. Now, there are going to be times when you go along with it because you just need a bit of damn peace. You just want that kid to shut up for a second. Even though you love that child of all your heart, you just, okay, you can have a lollipop, you can have an ice cream, you can have breakfast cereal for your dinner, just whatever, just stop going on. Which is okay now and then, it's okay, but you can't do that all the time because then they're the boss. So sometimes it's easier to let them be the boss. But the more they do it, the more they expect to be able to do it. And we know that's the case with kids the more you let them get away with the more they will try to get away with it's not even kids just human beings I think but kids don't know any better they just assume that they're the boss right from the start because that's what happens when they're babies they cry they get fed they get changed they cry they whatever whatever they want generally happens eventually and they learn how to manipulate the parents so you know children are the best manipulators in the world they don't get taught hypnosis or any kind of things ways to change the way another person's behaviour children just naturally are able to do it So in the same way, you wouldn't allow a five-year-old, no matter how much you love them, to boss you around and control you all the time. The same way you wouldn't allow, or you don't have to allow, a thought to have control over you. Just because something unpleasant happened and I'm not demeaning the situation it might be because it might be horrible and perhaps leaving the job is the right thing to do and I'm saying this not saying don't don't leave the job because I've said to do that obviously that would be ridiculous but I left the job because I had a female who was in charge I say female, just, it's not that relevant, but anyway, she was trying to bully me. And I left. And she was, she was actually the manager of a charity, would you believe, a children's charity, and she's basically started picking on me. So I left. And I left myself in really bad financial situation. Um, which was really terrible it was you know it's really it was a real financially bad decision but I couldn't stay and can you know have that continue and I suppose the reason I said it's a woman and I'm being honest if it had been a man doing it I don't think a man would have done it to me 
But if it had been a man treating me like that, it, it would have ended a lot quicker. It had ended after the first, probably the first time. Maybe I'd give the benefit of the doubt. The second time that the person was like that with me, I would have a word with them. And then see what happens after that. So, but I, for some reason, didn't, you know, I couldn't do that. I could, you know, I kind of didn't feel able to deal with it in that situation. But there you go. That's a, that, So I, I'm, and again, that was all down to the anxiety I was getting from going to this place where this woman was being horrible to me. Um, but I'm not saying leave your job, don't. Don't leave a job. Get you know, um, speak to someone. You know, but it's, it's might not be. It's good, might not have anything to do with a job. You know, I'm getting a bit focused on jobs and someone upsetting you at your work. It could be someone at a bus stop, at, in a shopping centre. Could be a family member. Could be your partner, your husband, your wife. Your could be your child. Could be your parent. Could be a neighbour. You know, it could any situation. It could be your pet. I mean, it could just be that your pet has destroyed uh, a photo album. You know, your dog might have destroyed your photo album. It's the the only picture you've got left of your of someone that you cared about has passed away, and you've got no other pictures of that person. You know, it could be something like that. As as creative as you want to get, you know, it could be something like that that has that emotion attached. So this is about disconnecting that emotion because the emotion is, was harmful. I'm not saying emotion is harmful, but that extreme emotional reaction, which carries on, which is then perhaps affecting your life and your future decisions and maybe leading you to making some rubbish decisions rubbish in a sense of harmful towards yourself maybe harmful towards those you care about so again this is about as I said you could cut the, umbil the umbilical cord because you know cut the balloon, the string to the balloon, let the balloon, the balloon is the, the thing. And as soon as, you know, balloon is, the string on a balloon is stiff, isn't it? It's standing up, it's, you know, it's like one of those <laughs> magic rope trips, trips, tricks, but with a balloon on the end, which I think might be how they do the magic rope trick, I don't know. Like a balloon, balloon a bit further up. But anyway, when you disconnect it, that string that's attached to that rope, to the to the balloon, or if it was a rope attached to a big old balloon, it just becomes floppy. It just turns back to being string. It's not actually being used for anything doesn't have a use. It doesn't have any energy connected to it. So you could look at either side. You could look at the balloon as being the emotion. And you could look at the memory of being you know, what's connected to you. So the balloon is almost connected by the string to your brain, to that memory. But the balloon is the emotion and it's walking and it's like following you around wherever you go. And to be fair, if you had a balloon following you around with a bit of string attached to your brain, sticking out your head with this balloon, how annoying that would be 
how would you explain it when you went out? How would you explain it to work colleagues? You know, you get called into the manager's office. Jason just had a few comments in the call centre today. <laughs> just wondering what that uh, balloon is. So you can cut that string, let that emotion go. That's connected to that thought or that memory. So it can't be turned, you can do it either way. I like the idea, I mean you can cut it now and we can do this, the, yes, we can do the, the scratch in the CD. So this is like another version of that. Or flying a kite. You got the kite flying. I used to fly kites when I was a kid. We had a really quite a steep cliff and it's quite windy there and I know my dad seemed very happy for me to get as close to the cliff as possible so I got a bit worried he wanted me to fall off but I never did and it was really windy because we were near the sea and it's shaking the whole time as well and it's very strong you can feel the power so imagine that's it's kind of the power of the emotion in that kite as it's flying almost like it's a struggle maybe that struggle is because it wants to get away do you ever think that that maybe the struggle the the intensity of the emotion connected with that memory of that person being an arse to you and you reacting or it could be something that happened. It could be a car crash. And But I'm trying to focus on something that's not too serious in the first instance. If you're going to sort of play around with these ideas. But something where the emotion stuck with you. The thing is with that emotion, it's shaky, isn't it? It causes anxiety. Which anxiety itself is a shaky kind of emotion. For me, personally, it seems very shaky. It's not... It's all like tremory, kind of... Like an earthquake or volcano, kind of... It's not gentle and smooth. Because then it'd be relaxation, I guess. It's... I've never thought of it before. Maybe... Maybe... That emotion... That negative emotion... That anxiety... that stayed I mean the initial emotion it's emotion there's nothing wrong with emotion it's healthy we're humans so that's fine I'm not saying don't have emotion I mean it's brilliant to have feelings you have to open yourself up to the un unpleasant ones to be available for the really pleasant ones however neither the pleasant nor unpleasant ones should still be following you around wherever you go because you know how are you supposed to function on what you're doing and focus on what you're doing now if you've got these little oompa loompas following you around oompa oompa diddly dee and you know it's like stop leave me alone that's what it's like with Andre when he follows me around, it's like, leave me alone. Sometimes I just want him to leave me alone. And he just follows me around. Like I'm Pied Piper or something. So that energy, you know, that energy of the kite that's blowing in the wind. Because it wants to get free. You hold a moth in your hand. What's it trying to do? Trying to get free. It doesn't want to be in your hand. So maybe that anxiety doesn't want to be in your body or in your mind. Maybe it actually wants to be set free. And the reason it's causing havoc and shaking and rattling like a moth inside your hand or uh, a wasp or bee trying to get out of a window 
or a kite shaking in the wind. Maybe because it feels trapped. It wants to be free. And sometimes it's not even the freedom to do anything. Like in the past, I've, I've, I've got a cage. I don't use it anymore, but not for me, for Andre. And there would be times when he'd want to get out and he would make so much noise. He'd rattle at the, at the cage, really rattle. And sometimes I'd just let, it, I'd, I'd let him out. And he'd just, he'd just walk across the floor and just lay down on the floor. He didn't want to do anything. That energy was gone. That energy of wanting to get out was released the second I opened the door of the cage. He just he walked out. He just wanted to be free. Didn't want anything to do with the cage. Just wanted to be free. And all of the noise stopped. All of the rattling, all of my anxiety, because I was getting wound up by him, stopped. His anxiety stopped. The atmosphere, the atmosphere, probably the neighbour downstairs probably felt more relaxed. So I imagine she probably heard him, which is partly why I let him out, because it was making so much noise. So if you've got that energy of that trapped emotion, it's trying to get out. It's rattling its cage. Why is it in the cage? Basically, it just wants to get out of the cage. It doesn't want to do you any harm. It just wants to get out of the cage and just be set free, to just, just go off. Like the kite wants to just be, the kite wants to be let go of. It will float off. The balloon is on the string. A balloon with helium in or a balloon, just a normal balloon if you're outside with the wind, it wants to blow away. It does not want anything else but to blow away. And I know that I'm giving a, you know, human emotions to a balloon, I realise that. But that's the natural thing to happen, is for that balloon just to blow away into the wind. Put helium into a balloon, the natural thing is for the balloon to just rise. And the only reason it stops at the ceiling is because there's a ceiling there. That's it, it's trapped in the, in the room. But you take it outside, you see how far it goes. So you've got a helium balloon in your room. And let's say that reminds you, that's the emotion. And that's reminding you of something that you don't want to be reminded of that's kind of finished but it's like picking at you it's like a built up emotion compared you know about a specific thing which is preventing you maybe from doing what you want to do in your life whether it's travelling getting on a plane getting the job you want to get asking out the, asking someone out that you really like but you're scared of the rejection because of a previous situation well I would say that at my age I've kind of got to realise that regret regret outweighs rejection in the pain stakes regret is way more painful than rejection so that comes from a 49 year old man I'm not saying it's true for everyone but for me regret is way more painful than rejection. It's not to say that rejection is nice because it's not, but, ooh. So, you've got this balloon in your room, in this, I've got this in the living room, I've got this balloon there, floating, sticking to the ceiling. Every time I walk in the room, it's there. And I don't like that balloon. I really don't like it. Really don't like it. I, you know, I've got a real... Oh, I don't like that. Because it reminds me. 
brings back that emotion, you know, it brings out that, it reminds me of the feelings, gets me thinking about that thing that happened. And because I've got a thing that happened and there's the emotion that's in that balloon and there's that connection, it's almost like it's connected to me. And I'm, not, I'm going to want to not come into this room. And eventually perhaps not want to come into this flat. I want to move. The thing is, that will follow me. Unless I take it outside and say bye-bye. Nice knowing you. <laughs> Probably wouldn't say that, but thank you. Just let it go. I watch it float up further and further and further till it's just a dot in the sky and then eventually it's nothing can't see it hopefully it won't cause a plane crash you know that obviously you know that that'd be bad but generally i don't think they can fly quite that high <laughs> so it, you let it go not because you want to let it go, or not just because you want to let it go, but because that's what the anxiety wants as well. The anxiety wants to be let go. Like that moth in your hand. Rattling it, all, rattle, 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 won't it? You can feel it going from, you know, side to side, from palm to palm. It just wants to be let out. And sometimes the only way to let it out safely is to hold it in your hand and put it out of a window. Otherwise it's gonna get stuck in there and you know you're gonna find it on the windowsill, upside down, drying out, dead. And you think, no, oh, I don't want that to happen to that moth. They don't live very long. Let it go, let it go outside and play with the street lights and you know, just have some fun. So, That's the idea behind this. I know I'm going back to the Scratch CD now. The Scratch CD, although I kind of moved on to the anger in the little cage or the anxiety in the little cage. This could be the Andre technique. Can you imagine that though? How does that, how do you feel when you think about that? the anxiety the things and I'm talking about things that are stopping you from doing stuff or you're attributing or you're allowing those things to stop you from having fun enjoying yourself going to work getting on a bus going to the gym uh, going you know going out to a a nightclub or to a restaurant maybe I don't know it could be lots of different things or simply leaving the house because I suppose there's various levels of anxiety as far as some people it's a specific thing some people it's generalised some people it's it feels like it's all the time some people will avoid going to certain places and I know I'm, I'm kind of still one of those sometimes but definitely been there but to not go out at all is almost, it feels like the worst one. I'm not, I'm not categorizing or, you know, uh, grading, but just to not even leave your house is awful. It's an awful situation to be in. So it's time. If, you're in that situation and I've kind of been in that situation a few times but not for 
not for long, long periods of time, if that makes sense. I have short periods of time when I'm like that. Is to start looking at what is it? What things? What emotions? Are holding you back? What events are stopping you? You know, when you think about it, it's the event in our brains. We think, well, it's the event that's stopping me. It's I'm not getting onto a bus because the bus crashed. Even though the idea of bus crashing is, you know, no one got hurt, but it crashed into a car because a car stopped. But it was traumatic, and it would be. I'd get very traumatized by that. I, I say traumatised but I get upset by it um, I've been in near crashes uh, to taxi crashed once when I was in it twice actually I was about to say I was about to say these things hardly ever happen but it was just a kind of freak accident really but nothing serious but I didn't allow it to stop me getting into a taxi because I put it down to the incompetence of the drivers, basically. And I also got a free journey out of it. It wasn't like, oh, I hope this one crashes as well so I can get a free free trip. It wasn't like that, but... the Well, actually, it wasn't a free trip. They did try and charge me, but I laughed at them. And I didn't pay. So... It's probably an accumulation of different memories and different events, possibly, that's getting in the way of certain things, you know, stopping us from doing certain things. And each one has an emotional connect to it, connected to it. And if you think of that as like, you know, it's an emotion. It's anxiety, it's stress. It wants to be set free. It's rattling. It's it's not calm, is it? It's not a calm feeling. Obviously, otherwise it'd be relaxation. So if it's not a calm feeling and it feels unpleasant, then it is a disturbed, rattling feeling of something trying to get out of a cage. But it's not anything dangerous. I think that's maybe part of the reason why we maybe keep it in the cage because what if it's dangerous but it isn't it's a feeling and a feeling can't be dangerous a feeling can't actually cause you harm it can be unpleasant it can be pleasant it can be really unpleasant and it can be beautiful you know it's just a feeling all it can do is be a feeling it doesn't have control over you in the same way that little five year old child can't have control over you if you don't let it so if you just imagine it's the balloon you let go of the let go you know you just cut the string so it's not following you around wherever you go or if it's a kite let go of the, let go of the handle which is you know part of the kite the handle with the string attached just let go let the whole thing just blow off blow away that's what I used to do it used to annoy my dad we got through about 16 kites a year I used to say sorry. Didn't realise. I thought he'd come back. I I said so. I said I get my I get confused between uh, kites and boomerangs. I think he believed me the first three times, but after that, I think he thought I was making fun. So open that cage. In fact, in fact, or if you choose. You could remove the door from that cage so that nothing else can be trapped in it again. And I'm not saying 
un, you know, don't, I'm not saying to, you know, remove every single door of every single, you know, cage of every emotion or every bit of anxiety that you have all in one go. No, I'm not saying that. But each one you release, each bit of uh, anxiety or stress that you just let out of that cage, then remove the door, dismantle it, so that nothing else can get trapped in there. So that's one less place, one less place for anxiety and stress to rattle and to feel trapped. So I'll leave you with uh, the original reason for this recording was the Scratch CD or the Scratched album or the Scratched DVD. So <laughs> I know it seems weird after saying all the other stuff and to come back to this, but it's a little exercise you can do. So I'd like you to think about something um, that someone's, something that's annoyed you or upset you to the point where you're feeling anxious or stressful about it. It might be a little bit difficult to get that feeling back now. That's the problem with these recordings, changes do happen, but it's worth remembering that changes happen, they're always gonna happen. Everything's always changing. And what you're doing um, by listening to these recordings is you're opening yourself up to changes maybe being a bit more aware of it, being more open to those things, what, just being less blocked, unblocking those blockages. It's a sentence, isn't it? Unblocking those blockages. So, with a scratch CD technique, basically all it is, and I'll let you do this in your own time, I'll just tell you what it is and, and they'll go, you think about something, <clears throat> excuse me, or oh, my little coffee throat. <clears throat> if you think about something that's happened lately and you've got a sense of anxiety, or if you've got a sense of anxiety or stress, and just follow that stress to an event, something that makes sense that it's connected to. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to put that anxiety and stress and have it printed onto a CD. So all that information, it could be a CD-ROM. It could be, um, if you go back long enough, you know, a floppy disk. Or it could be a flash disk drive. It could be a hard disk drive. If you go inside a laptop... The disk, the disk drive is actually a CD. You know, it's not, a, not like a normal CD, but it's still, that's kind of what it is. If you kind of dismantle the, the laptop, or if you dismantle the hard drive to a computer. So you have got everything is being transferred onto that. That emotion is just being transferred onto that disk, okay? Again, it could be onto a record player, could be onto a DVD player, whatever. But let's say a disc. And you wait for it just to be processing. So you can just imagine it's doing it through a laptop. You got you put the disc, a blank disc, into the drive. And now you're just waiting for it to process. Waiting for it to transfer those feelings onto that disc. Just do a bunch, just one bunch of feelings first. You haven't got to do everything all at once. You know, otherwise, what what would we do in the next recording? I don't, you know, kind of you lose all the relaxed, you know. you got to have, if you get rid of all your stress and anxiety sort of now, then you, you might not want to listen to me again. So I want, you know, <laughs> I want you to keep listening forever. So I keep a little bit. <laughs> so... Stick that onto the disc. 
When it's processed, press the eject button. And you just can look at the disc. This looks fine. This looks fine. You look at it, yeah, it's clear. Put it back in, put it into, um, you can put it back into the laptop and you can play it. Press play. And with that play, what you get, when you get the play button, you press it, you get those feelings back. Now, admittedly, you might struggle to get some of those feelings back the way they were before you started doing this and before you started listening to me because, you know, things change, things start to reduce, the scratching almost starts to happen as soon as you listen to me. So, you know, kind of every time you listen to me, another... Another bit of anxiety and stress seems to sort of evaporate, but I'm sorry about that. But if you can, you know, if you try and get a hold of that feeling, try and get into touch with it um, as much as you can when you listen to that CD, you press it, play. It's no music, it's just the feeling. So, whatever level, if you think it's, if you think like it's a one to ten on the anxiety level, one being practically nothing 10 being all you know horrible so see what number it is what gauge it in your own mind is it whatever it is whatever number it is now eject it eject the cd i think it's boring listen to that you don't want to be listening to that and uh what you're going to do imagine you've got I don't know, it could be anything. A fork. You know, like cutlery, a fork. Or a knife, cutlery knife or cutlery fork. Or anyone, something like that. And just start scratching it across it, across from side to side. But really, really make a mess of it. It's almost like you can, you can see the the anxiety just kind of little bits of bits of debris just kind of just being I don't know almost discharged from that CD so when you're happy with the amount of damage and destruction you've caused to that anxiety and that CD you know when you realize that there's no way in the world that that could do anything other than just not play, basically. It's destroyed. You've destroyed it. You can basically just you know, wipe it off a little bit so the debris's gone on the floor, you know, and you can put that damaged CD back into the CD player of the laptop or just a CD player and then press play. Now, what level are you from 1 to 10 or 10 down to 1? Or 10 down to 0? What, what level is it now? What anxiety and stress is left in that now? After destroying it. Now, if there is anything left, eject it. And what you do now is you just snap the CD into little bits. You can do it with your hands. You can get some pliers. You can you can hit it with, hit it with something. It's in your mind anyway, so it doesn't matter. So you could get a hammer. You could smash it with a hammer. Whatever you want to do. You could get in your car. You could drive over it. You can imagine you're driving on a steamroller and you you drive. I'd love to drive on a steamroller. Never been on one. I don't drive, but a steamroller would be so much fun. Can you imagine? Because let's face it, if you're on a steamroller, it's got to be one of the safest vehicles on the road. And cyclists aren't going to get in the way, are they? So it's like, oh... Anyway, imagine you're cycling, you're not cycling, you're on a steamroller and you're just crushing this stupid CD that's of no use to you. Yeah, it's gone. Can't come back, it's gone. That will never be a CD ever again. 
it's impossible cannot happen it's gone just like you're never going to get that helium bloom back ever it's gone You know? If you have a burger, a nice burger and chips, maybe, or, uh, or corn burger and chips, whatever, a nice big, big meal in a restaurant, and then, you know, the food goes through your digestive system and you poo it out in the toilet, you're never going to turn that back into a meal. It's, you destroyed that food. It's gone. So I'm going to leave you on that. Thank you for listening. I've got no idea what I'm going to name this recording because it's a little bit, a um, few little things, but the main topic really is let it go. Free that anxiety. So I think that's what I'm going to call this. And even though I did kind of want to focus on the CD, which I have, maybe I'll kind of do a little double, a double name. Anyway, thank you for listening. Lots of love to all of you. Remember to be kind to yourself. And you know, what I discovered I... I started thinking, oh, because it's a new thing online, be kind, hashtag be kind. Um, and I found a recording from 2014 or 2015. I was listening to it and I said, remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. And I said that. It's like five years ago I was saying stuff like that. So who knows how long I've been saying it. Oh, I only just noticed myself saying it. That's weird. I think it's because remember to be kind. Yeah, I might have been saying it for over ten years, I don't know. Wow. Anyway, it's not that I invented the sentence because I didn't. But uh it's important. It's so important. If you don't get anything else from these ramblings that I kind of present to you. Do something nice for yourself. Please, be nice to yourself. And you know, some people don't know what that means. And sometimes I've been in a position where I didn't know what that means. And sometimes I have to give it some thought. What does actually being nice to myself mean? I'll have a cigarette, I'll have a big bar of chocolate, I'll, you know, I'll have a, I'll, have a, I'll eat something unhealthy, because that's nice, it makes me feel good. Yeah, but it's not necessarily being kind to yourself, but it's not necessarily not either, because, you know, being kind to yourself doesn't necessarily mean being healthy, but ultimately, being healthy is being kind to yourself. It's just more of a longer term thing. So having the odd chocolate bar, providing you're not diabetic or got a, you know, a physical reason why you shouldn't do that stuff, possibly is okay. I say possibly because I don't know your situation. But doing, being kind to yourself for me is more an emotional thing. And what gives you the opposite to the feeling of stress? What gives you the opposite to the feeling of anxiety? What gives you pleasure? What gives you a sense of relaxation and a a sense of appreciation towards yourself or maybe towards your life, towards what you do have instead of focusing on what you don't have? What what gives you you know does that make sense what gives you what you need even if it is a small thing it could be as simple as 
having a bath. It could be, again, I'm going back to toilet humour again, but it could be getting yourself some wet wipes for your bum instead of toilet paper. Just give yourself a little bit of a break. You know what I mean? Just be a bit nice to your bum hole. It could be anything. <laughs> I can't help myself, sorry. But just buying yourself uh, something nice, a new pair of shoes, maybe watching a movie, phoning a friend, having an early night, not because you need to sleep, but because you actually enjoy lying down on your bed because it's comfortable. Reading a book, you could start writing a book. Have a sing song. You know, have a, have a do a karaoke. I mean, you could. Do, there's loads of karaoke videos on YouTube. Pick a song you really love and just have a big dance and sing a song. It's whatever makes you happy. Some people like to be physically active. For other people, it could be reading uh, a history book. It could be going through a photo album and, you know, organising things. It could could be something doing some housework or doing the laundry or doing the washing up some, or doing the ironing. It could, some people I've known that actually enjoy doing that stuff. They feel good when they do that. I don't and I never will, but some people do. I like the end result of it, but I don't iron. Oh no. Going to the gym. You know, it could be anything. So when I do say those words at the end, be kind to yourself, you know, there's there's a reason behind those words. I'm not just saying it as a platitude. It's just something that's really important. Probably the most important part of the whole recording. Although I think uh, setting the anxiety free because it doesn't want to be trapped. Which is why it's causing you problems and rattling that cage. I think that's quite a good uh, thought process there. which can actually lead to healing. So now I'm going to go. Thank you very much for listening. As I said, be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. I won't go into all the reasons why you deserve to be happy on this recording, but I will do again, of course, another time because I love repeating myself. I love to try and find different ways of saying the same thing because it uses up time on the record no it's just sometimes I, I find that sometimes I need to if I'm going to if I'm going to learn a new subject so when I first started learning hypnosis I bought loads and loads and loads of books and I was reading the same stuff but from different vantage points so I learnt the history of hypnosis and I learnt some of the, you know, the language patterns and I learnt some of the, um, just the thinking behind it and the, the science and much more from, instead of just reading one book, however brilliant the book might have been, I just liked reading lots of different books. The same as when I did reflexology. Did I say reflex? Reflexology. I read loads of books because I like to learn it in different ways. Sometimes just a different diagram explaining the same thing can be the difference between understanding something and thinking, what the heck was that? Was that how to make an omelette or how to do reflexology? I don't know. So it's lots of different versions of the same thing I find is helpful and maybe that's why I do this because you could say well you're just doing the same thing over and over again possibly is it helpful that's the only thing that, that really matters is it helpful is it useful nothing else, nothing else matters 
with this podcast? Is it helpful? So now I'm going to go. Thank you. Lots of love. Take care of yourselves. And I'll speak to you very soon. Bye. Bye.